Hi, everyone. This is Michelle Gramolia, the president and CEO here at Woodland Pond. And this is my weekly address for a Tuesday. Today is Tuesday, October 15th, 2024. I have quite a few things to go over today. So we'll start with some calendar items. Today at 2 p.m. in the pack, Suscom is bringing you uh, a, a presentation on unwanted or what some refer to as junk mail, but it's not just the junk mail. Um, it's also things that you want to receive, but maybe you could receive online, like for example, bills and so forth. So we're gonna do some educational information about the impacts of the printing and the distributing of the junk mail. We're gonna do an exercise at the tables for each um, group of table mates. And uh, then we're gonna talk to you about some of the, the tools and tips to reduce some unwanted mail coming into your mailbox. Today at 7.15 in the pack, our LGBTQIA plus and allies interest group um, is, is sponsoring a panel discussion in observance of National Coming Out Day. Tomorrow, which is Wednesday at 1.30 p.m. in the pack, we have our monthly management Q&A. Uh, Thursday at 2 p.m. in the pack, our next iteration of Council Connections will be taking place and the invited uh, connected person is going to be Tom Tango and uh, who's our Director of Plant Operations and Fred Walensky will be the interviewer. On Thursday at 2.30 p.m. in the Health Center Great Room, Michael Holt, who is a um, friend or relative of Perry Gunther, will be here providing piano music and conversation. On Friday at 2 p.m. in the classroom, Mel Ocean will present a program and a discussion about the atom. And he promises that this is a resident friendly presentation and won't be super heavy on mathematics. Uh, you can sign up at Concierge for that. And Saturday, uh, we have two events going on. Um, the first would require sign up at Concierge, but we are uh, participating in our annual walk uh, to end Alzheimer's, which is um, at the walkway over the Hudson. Beautiful autumn time to do that. Woodland Pond is one of the sponsors and uh, we're looking forward to all residents that are interested in, in joining us on that walk to sign up at Concierge. We are providing transportation. Um, we are departing here at around 9 a.m. And then on Saturday, 3.30 p.m. in the pack, we will have a, a celebration of life and a time of remembrance for Ted Buley. Today, you may have noticed that there is a crane on campus or a, a very large lift, more like a smaller crane. Uh, this is because we do have a vendor that is here helping us to completely upgrade, uh, replace and upgrade our lightning uh, intervention system that's on our roof lines. So this is hardware uh, that it sort of works like a lightning rod. Um, to make sure that if we do get struck by lightning, uh, that there are protections in place. So we are currently replacing and upgrading that system. And that's why that crane is here. Um, you will see another crane, possibly that one, maybe a different one uh, here on, I believe it's Friday. Uh, we will get signs up about this, but uh, that is because we need to uh, move some materials on top of the health center roof. Uh, there will be a parking interruption we will get that information out and uh, they will have to park in the lot, the larger lot that's over by the library. So keep posted for that. Uh, the next thing I wanted to talk about is we have had a resident ask us to remind all residents that we do have a resident to resident communication forum. Uh, it is called the BraveNet Forum, and you can log into and utilize that right there on our Woodland Pond website resident portal. If you have any questions about that, you can call concierge and we can give you instructions. This is where residents can communicate with one another if you don't want to do it via email. Um, it's a great place to find out about uh, things that are on the minds of your fellow residents, opportunities. Uh, we see things like that people are going to in the local area or um, ideas for interest groups or other things that are going there. So it's really a nice place for residents to be able to communicate with each other without having to create an entire um, listserv from the email uh, phone list. I have some 
things from Happy or Not from uh, the last week that I just wanted to go through. Um, we did get a comment about someone on the 12th at around 8 p.m. that referenced being a table of six and that the server uh, didn't seem to know exactly who received which item. And so for each item, it sounds like they were saying, uh, I have a Diet Coke, who had the Diet Coke? I have the salmon, who had the salmon, et cetera. Um, absolutely, this is great feedback for us. Uh, the only thing I would ask in a case like this is to be specific about which actual day the meal was, um, because then we're gonna do one-on-one -on -one training with the staff member. So this was put in on the 12th, but it's not clear if the meal was on the 12th. Uh, lots of people thanking us for the organic greens. We hope you enjoy those. Uh, uh, let's see. Chicken, fried chicken, maybe was a little bit light for this particular table on the actual chicken meat itself. Um, please always feel free to send your dishes back and we are encouraging you to do that. So if you, if you select something and for any reason it's not coming out the way that you intended it or wanted it to, and you think that that's a production issue, please do send it back. Uh, we want you to be satisfied. Um, there's a couple of, of comments in here about a resident that apparently ordered a flank steak dinner or meal um, and only received two slices of the steak itself. And then others at the table had four. Sounds like maybe the wait staff person wasn't exactly sure what to do or how to handle it. It looks like it got rectified. Um, but again, have, understanding and knowing which specific meal and even if you put your table in so that we can talk to the individual servers themselves is very helpful. Uh, a comment in here about how Tuesday and Wednesday, the selections were not favorable to this particular resident that put the comment in. Um, they were a couple of comfort food type items. I know for a fact that we offer a wide variety of things, including um, things that are always on the menu. So if that particular night um, you don't like one of the specialty entrees, I would encourage you to um, take a look at those always available items. So this was in particular, this resident I think maybe wasn't interested in the fried chicken um, or the biscuits or gravy, but of course we've got lots of entrees and lots of always available items. Um, there is a comment in here about these not being conducive to seniors who are watching what they eat but we are not here to control your diets. Um, we offer a wide variety of things so that somebody wants to eat biscuits and gravy every night. Um, we're not gonna have it on the menu every night, but if that's the, the route that they wanna go, that's available to them just as if somebody might want to eat a vegetarian meal or have a salad every night. So we have to have a variety um, and uh, you'd have to manage your own diets and independent living, but we definitely need to have a variety. The last thing on Happy or Not that I wanted to mention is there is a comment in here about table 33 being very wobbly and unsteady to the point of being unsafe. Uh, while we do appreciate very much that the um, comment was put in Happy or Not because it's obviously a safety concern, um, I would wanna just reinforce that the best thing to do in that case is to immediately put a work order in. If at any time on campus you see something that is unsafe or something that you're questioning um, because our maintenance staff works off of a work order system. So you just have to go to concierge or call concierge and just let them know that you need to put a work order in and you would do it exactly the same as you did here. You describe it and then they will um, put that work order in for you because we do wanna get those attended to. Uh, the next thing Lindsay asked me to share is when we upgraded the trail system, we actually did uh, have the uh, excavation company put in uh, locations for memorial benches. This is something that we have offered here on campus for a number of years. Um, it's one of the things that provides financial support to the benefit fund, but also um, is a nice way to honor a loved one that has passed away or a friend, you know, however you'd like to do that. So we currently have, I believe, eight locations on the trails, Branch and McBride that can hold the uh, new memorial benches. Right now, I think we've got four folks that are interested. Uh, so if you're interested in a memorial bench, you can contact Lindsay. She's got all the details. Uh, you the, the cost that is charged includes the cost of the pad, um, the bench, the 
plaque, memorial plaque from Timely Signs, which is customized to your, however you, wording you want to use. And then um, uh, the balance, which is a small balance goes to the benefit fund. Uh, okay, the next thing, uh, we've been busy. We are going to need uh, within the next couple of months to start looking at logistical type spaces and logistical type things as we look at renovation beginning um, in the community building probably by May 15th of 2025. And one of the things that our team has identified as we've had our many, many design meetings and Dave Roberts has talked about is we are going to need to move or eliminate items in Woolen Pond resident South storage. Um, so we are going to be issuing a memo to all residents in independent living apartments that have storage cages uh, of what your alternatives are going to be. So just sort of in walking through the spaces last week, which our team did, a lot of you don't have much in your cages at all. Uh, a lot of you also, it appears, put a lot of things in your cages when you first moved in and haven't touched them since. Um, there's a lot of dust down there and things look like they just kind of got piled in. Um, so it's kind of a mixed bag but there's definitely opportunity. And what will happen is, is that throughout the course of the renovation, that space will actually be made an overflow space to be used for whatever we need it for. So the cages will be coming out of north, of south storage. Um, so you're gonna see a memo coming out that is gonna give you all of your options as to what you'd like to do. We are still offering a $25 per month credit for any resident that gives up their storage cage from independent living, uh, the, one of the apartments. Uh, so you'll see that as an option. Um, there are options to share uh, storage with another resident in North, um, have a newly built smaller storage cage. You'll see the options, but uh, that memo will be coming out today, probably. Um, and we will talk about it tomorrow at management Q and A, but yes, it is resident storage South that uh, we will need to be emptying. So we're trying to get ahead of that now. We're asking you to make your selections by November 14th. Okay, the last thing I wanted to do today was provide an update uh, to the best of my ability as to the circumstances that are happening at the Amsterdam and Harbor side. This is uh, pursuant to the uh, memo and um, information I provided you last week during my weekly update weekly address. Uh, there has been an article that has come out on CBS News. Um, it was linked to my email this morning. I don't know if it was a local affiliate, uh, but sort of more thoroughly enumerates the concerns of the residents, certainly. Uh, if you were to read the article, uh, you can just Google the Amsterdam at Harborside latest news or whatever, and Google will bring you up the article. Uh, you will see that this one is more emotional than the last, uh, which was the one that we shared with you last week. This really comes from the perspective of the residents that are clearly um, experiencing a great deal of distress and uncertainty. Uh, it sort of elaborates on a little bit more of the logistics of, you know, the history, the bankruptcies, um, the failure of the purchase and sale that was hoped for to go through, what the residents are attempting to um, have the governor intervene on. And I think it's important for everyone to understand that absolutely this is a very scary, very emotional time for the seniors. But just as there are very significant regulations in place to protect the residents in New York state, much more so than any other state, just about to my knowledge in the country, more regulations protecting residents of CCRCs. Those same regulations also in some ways tie the hands of regulators um, when solutions are trying to be found because a significant amount of what governs our industry in New York is law, not regulation. And so, when the regulators are looking at what are our options here, right? So we know we have a problem. Uh, 
there's potentially a proposed solution um, that would have involved, as I mentioned in my memo, a uh, a change in the status of this organization from a not-for-profit to a for-profit owner. Um, the regulators, when they're looking at what can we approve here, regardless of whether it's the governor, who's, you know, I guess the highest regulator in the state, and all of the people that are, are regulating this on a daily basis, their hands are tied for certain things because of Article 46 of the New York State Public Health Law. And when something is a law and those restrictions are in place, the regulator's hands are tied. I, I know I've repeated it a couple of times. Sometimes there are policies that those that are based off of those laws and there's a little bit more wiggle room there and how things are adjudicated. And then there's something in between. So I would say that the policies have probably the most flexibility, although it, it, it's not loosey goosey. The laws are the most rigid and offer the least amount of flexibility. And then somewhere in between is a, a more granular interpretation of how to adjudicate the law. And that's called a regulation here in New York. Um, and again, those regulations are, you know, they're, they're formalized, they are set in stone, but they do not require legislative action to change them. Um, they require departmental um, uh, change as long as they're in keeping with the existing laws. So there continues to be a lot of finger pointing, but I think it's very important for you to understand that it is very evident to me uh, based on conversations that I've had within my industry leaders here in New York and with a number of my contacts at New York State that the folks that are in charge of regulating what's going to happen next want nothing more than for these seniors to stay in their homes and to be made and kept whole in terms of their entrance fees uh, and the potential refunds. They 100% want to see that as the primary outcome. And there have been other situations in New York where such deals have been able to successfully be uh, negotiated. So there have been a couple of ownership changes um, that were that occurred within the last few years for a couple of CCRCs in New York that were in financial straits, um, not to the extent that the Amsterdam is. Um, but solutions were able to be found even within the structures of Article 46 of the public health law here in New York. Um, in this case, the circumstances are very specific and solutions that need to be found have to be looked at through the lens of what are our options under procedure, under regs and under law, and are we restricted to certain things to say yes or no if it is a law. Um, so it's just really important to kind of understand that. I don't know how far this finger pointing is going to get. I do see in this article that uh, the residents certainly are asking Governor Hochul to intervene to the extent that she can. Um, but I think it will be yet to be seen uh, if more information continues to come out where the breakdown in the deal occurred related to whether or not it was procedural, regulatory, or a law issue. I wanted to give you a little bit of that context. Uh, tomorrow at management q and I'd be happy to talk about all of this a little bit more to the extent that residents are interested. I don't want it to become the overall topic because we've got a lot to talk about tomorrow. But if you do have issues or questions about this or things that you'd like me to ponder and maybe cover tomorrow at management Q&A, please do send me an email and uh, I will be happy to do that. That is all we have for today. Have a great day.